Replacing a laptop with an iPad. I think we've all thought about this before. I'll tell you straight up that it just can't happen for me as a full-time replacement. And with Apple also sort of stepping off the pedal on this and just how good MacBooks have been lately, I just don't think they really believe in it either. But just for the sickos like you and me, I use this iPad Air as my personal laptop for a week. Let me tell you about the highs, the lows, and how this contraption could work for me and maybe for you as a laptop replacement in some ways. The setup. Here's my wife's iPad Air 4, which does not have an M1 or M2 chip, so it's definitely not the latest and greatest. But if you watch my recent revisited video of this iPad, it's pretty much identical to the latest iPad models and still performs really, really well. Plus, you can find it for just about $400 right now. By the way, before you ask, I'm going to Amazon link all the items I show here, so if you're interested in any of these, look below in the description box. Then we've got the Gujadoc Bluetooth keyboard and case, which you can get for just about $20 to $30. Of course, keyboards with official smart connectors are much more convenient since you don't have to charge them separately, but those are also much more expensive. Plus, this even comes with a trackpad at such a low price, so we're going with this. We'll also need a USB-C hub to access external storage or anything like that. I can't find this specific model anymore online, but you can get something very similar for around $30 to $50 right now, so let's say $40. And we got to get gaming in there, so let's also throw in an old Xbox One controller, which is sadly still pretty expensive. I'm also including the Apple Pencil 2, which I basically never use, so since it's just for the aesthetics of this video, let's just say $0 for that. So everything together, we're looking at a $530 total setup, which is around the price of a low mid-range laptop top pretty great for Apple standards. Very portable setup due to the compact size, so there's a wider variety of bags can fit this into compared to a laptop. This keyboard case is definitely very protective and feels much more premium than what the price says, but I do have to say that it's pretty heavy, so I can't say this is an ultra portable setup. So for my day-to-day, -day, my most important laptop things to do are email, browsing, spreadsheets, typing up scripts, and multitasking between all those things. The iPadOS Gmail app is decent and better for notifications and has a simpler UI compared to the browser version, but without tabs and two-finger click for additional options, this is still a very touch-focused UI and not great for working with multiple threads and drafts. I prefer working in the desktop version through the browser, but it barely works for account switching and notifications don't work too well. So I did resort to staying with the Gmail app instead. The same goes for Google Sheets. A lot of the basic keyboard shortcuts and functions, including the pivot table shortcuts, are not available here on the Sheets app and double-click options are hard to navigate through. These iPad apps are still super responsive though, so you can see still get the job done, especially through your default browser, which thankfully works a lot like their desktop versions. As for typing, the experience has been really good on this ultra budget keyboard. This is a small product meant for an 11 inch tablet, but the spacing and key travel are pretty decent and feels just as good as the much more expensive Magic Keyboard or even the Surface Go keyboard. No issues with latency or lag on this, even though it is a Bluetooth connection. When you're focused on one thing, like writing long form content like the script for this video or taking a bunch of notes for a university lecture, this iPad laptop set up works really well. Because with the screen as small as this, multitasking isn't as important, but when you need it to, iPad OS can get it done. This iPad model doesn't have access to Stage Manager, but it can do split screen, slide over, and command tab for quickly switching between apps. That's all been super helpful for writing up emails and scripts while listening to music. It's definitely not as productive as multitasking with multiple windows like a regular laptop OS, but again, it's great for getting really focused on one project and getting it done. The trackpad on the other hand is very janky. That's not really the fault of this product though, as I felt the experience to be just as janky on the official Apple Magic Keyboard. The way the cursor behaves and moves on iPadOS is overly helpful. Understandable since the UI is so touch-based, but because of that, it just feels unnatural navigating throughout iPadOS with a trackpad. My personal biggest complaints have been highlighting text or accessing certain UI elements like the control center or notifications, which can get very annoying. The good news is that since this is an iPad, you also don't don't have to rely solely on a trackpad. Plus, if you need a lot of reading, highlighting, or signing a document, you can just use it as a tablet and get that kind of thing done much more efficiently compared to a laptop. Because of this, I do tend to use a touchscreen in conjunction with a trackpad for most things, which isn't ideal, but it's how I've been doing things on iPadOS. Thanks to all the new creative apps coming to iPad lately, content creation on iPadOS is more than possible now. For video editing, I'm a big DaVinci Resolve user, and it's basically the fully featured desktop version here. You can check out my other video about this app on the iPad, but yeah, it works really well even on this older iPad Air model. Very little slowdowns with scrubbing and exporting even when working with multiple 4K video files. Not quite as smooth as doing the same on my M1 MacBook, especially because of the janky 
trackpad software, but the overall experience is pretty close and the performance is much better than most Windows laptops that I've worked on. Ever since I stopped paying for Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom, I've been using Canva for editing my photos and thumbnails and it's very easy to use on the iPad as well. My biggest complaint about the content creation process here would be the file management on iPadOS. On Windows and Mac, I can easily manage my offline and on-cloud files with multiple file management windows, quickly dragging and dropping between folders and things of that sort. On the iPad, you can have multiple file management instances, but activating and switching between those windows can be a painfully slow experience. It's almost like Apple doesn't want you to use their file management system for internal storage. Maybe it's more convenient to use with the new stage manager, but that's what I felt with the older iPad Air 4 here. As for gaming, the iPad, as you all know, is amazing. Of course, you can't treat this as a PC type of gaming device because almost nothing is compatible with the keyboard and mouse, but with an Xbox controller, the iPad is an awesome portable gaming device. There's so many high quality app store games along with the option for Apple Arcade and COD Mobile is actually really fun with the controller. Plus, you can't forget about Xbox Cloud Gaming, which lets you play console quality games from anywhere you are with good internet. And for some reason, Xbox Cloud Gaming runs much smoother on iOS and iPadOS. Considering how portable this is, it's been really fun to bring this around to play some cloud gaming outdoors. That's why the NBA 2K Arcade Edition is super interesting to me and I'm thinking about doing an entirely separate video on it to see if it's worth anyone's time. Let me know if you're interested in seeing that. Speaking of which, let's just quickly go over performance. Even with just four gigs of RAM, this older iPad Air has been so, so good in keeping apps in the background and everything else from daily productivity to content creation to gaming. Even with some multitasking and long gameplay sessions, this iPad just refuses to get hot. And because of how efficient iPad OS is along with the A14 Bionic inside, the battery life is still super impressive even when used as a two-in-one laptop. Unlike a MacBook that closes and opens, you still get all your notifications here, but iPad OS only sips a little bit of power, making the standby time just as good as an M1 MacBook. And when being used because iPadOS tends to process each application one at a time, putting everything on pause, it's been very efficient in terms of screen on time, battery life. It definitely lasts me a full workday of productive work with around 40% left in the tank. The internals here are just fantastic and Apple did such a good job with the A14 Bionic inside here that I really have no complaints about the internal hardware on this thing. I went over this before and I have to highlight that the huge thing holding the iPad back as a full-fledged laptop is simply the software. If you're focused on a single task and getting that done, this is a super productive, fast device for that. On the other hand, if you have a ton of things to get done where you need to split screen, switch back and forth between different app pairs, copy and pasting multiple lines of text and spreadsheet values, it's just really frustrating to get that kind of thing done on iPad OS. Now, after one week of using this iPad as a laptop replacement, I've realized several important things. The iPad really can do most things a laptop does. Even though I have some big frustrations about productivity due to the limited multitasking, for my use cases, I still can do everything I need to do on a laptop here, just a little bit slower. So for me right now, this setup is a great part-time laptop and a cafe companion where I need to finish up a video script and reply to a few emails here and there. I realized this is better for that because on a laptop, I'm usually too distracted with so many apps open at once. If I was still in university, just like how I loved using the Surface Go as a student, this would have been perfect for note taking and for trapping myself in a library and finally finishing that essay. And in between classes, I could have gotten some gameplay in there too. So it really comes down to your use case, but I think it can be a part-time companion laptop for just about anyone. I can also see this being a full-time laptop replacement for people that are tech literate with simpler computer needs. I say tech literate because iPadOS with a keyboard and trackpad is a weird combo of touch and mouse UI elements that aren't entirely obvious. So it can be confusing for people that have a tough time with tech products. So those are just my thoughts. Let me know your experience in the comments below if any of you have made the full switch or at least tried to. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.